What's up everyone and welcome back to the channel, it's me Kazak the Bull bringing you a very special video on Infinity Magic Raid. This video has had so much time put into it, so I appreciate any like, any subscription, any comment that you put below because this is all for you guys to help you have the best advice you can possibly have. Now I was a beta player for Infinity Magic Raid, I know enough myself, okay, but I did have the help of ACOS Global who came from beta as well. He's a level 85 beta player. Um, he knows his stuff. Uh, we went through this list together. There was other people involved as well. Uh, the likes of Bailey, the likes of Sol, the likes of Poz. Um, and, you know, I, I can't thank you guys enough for, for talking with me, taking the time to really make a video that is going to help everyone in the game currently. Now, it may look like a lot. You're going to think, okay, there's, there's some... Like, hold a, a Boro, these guys are lower, what, what's going on? Because people are people are saying that these are the best heroes in the game. They may help you early on, okay? But if you have any of these above, any of these above, they will help you through the entire game. The entire game. Okay, so you're not having to waste time regressing, wondering why you can't beat that one. So, please, thank you everyone for watching. Make sure you click like and subscribe, and I appreciate all the comments, likes, everything. Okay, so thank you everyone for watching. I do appreciate it. Let's get into this, okay? Now, I am going to skip this B tier because, unfortunately, guys, they just are no good. They are no good for PvE, and it's sad, but please do hold on to them. Don't go, okay, this is bad. This is bad. Um, I don't want this. I'm going to use them as food because they can get changed. They can get changed. Okay, they patch. They could become S tier, A tier, and they could be useful. All right. I recently spoke with someone in global chat on Infinity earlier. And as you can see at the very top of the list, we have the robot, Elec. He used this hero as food. And I am gutted. Absolutely gutted for this person. Absolutely. So we're going to continue i'm sorry for rambling on i'm just excited to get this tier list out um and to help all of you guys so enough's enough here we go we're ignoring b tier none of these are good enough for pve okay we're gonna go straight up to a tier now you're wondering who is this this is norma this is norma and she is used in tower okay so she she has some effects that you will need because there's just no one else to to use in place we need we need certain heroes for tower of mark all right we can't just get rid of all our epics we then have Sedora, who again is another one that you just cannot replace. You cannot replace. You need to be using her in, in Tower of Mark or um, or Faction Tower, you know. So please save them. Don't feed them. Keep hold of them. You'll need them because there's just there's not enough heroes in that faction to help you progress. Um, next up is Asindo. Now, yes, Asindo is amazing in PvP. Unfortunately, she's not as good in PvE. And that's because we don't need the control in PvE. It's for PvP. Control is purely for PvP. We just do not need it. Um, Aisha is across from Asindo. Now, fair dues, early game, Aisha is very useful. She does do a lot of damage. She does do a lot of damage. It's just not enough in comparison to what we have above. Still, use her. She is good. I know some people are going to be upset with me. I've been talking to some people, and they are going to be upset why I put Aisha. But when you get towards the end game, you're going to realize that, okay, you're right. And if I'm wrong, tell me why, okay? Tell me why I'm wrong. But she just drops off. Now, after, after Aisha, we have carried, and he just doesn't deal enough damage. He does some horrify. Um, he has a, you know, a passive of horrify and direct damage dealt to enemy targets under the horrify increases, but it's still not enough. And that's why he is this low in this tier. He is A tier. After this, we have Solly. Now, Solly is, we covered him in the PvP, uh, content, the tier list. Make sure you check that one out if you haven't checked that one out already. If you come from that, thank you for your view. Um, so Solly is basically a PvP. PvP hero. He doesn't do enough in PvE, um, especially not dungeons and, and guild boss, and he's not strong enough defensive wise. So do not get rid of him because he is very useful in PvP. Remember, this is a pure PvE tier list. Okay, pure PvE. After that, we have Zach Zulu. Now, again, Zach Zulu in he will be okay. Very beginning game. Very beginning game. 
Mid game even he's okay. End game he's just not enough. He doesn't do enough damage. There is far better AOE attacking heroes. There is far better heroes in general. So um, yes, please do steer clear of Zach Lulu for, for now. For now, he could get a patch. Remember that. Moving on to Naskama. I really struggle pronouncing his name, so I do apologise. Um, but yes, you can see where my mouse is held. This is Nasakama. Um, he just doesn't do enough PvE. He deals a decent amount of damage. He does steal enemy buffs, but he is more for PvP. So stay clear of him if you're trying to build for progress. Uh, we do not need we do not need him in PvE. Elena. Now, Elena is a nice support if you don't have access to the above. Um, she can cleanse, she can heal, um, and she is useful, but there's just better options, okay? So that's why she is in A tier. So she's still usable, she just needs a rework. Timmy. Timmy, Timmy, Timmy. Um, I really dislike Timmy with a passion. Um, that's not why he's listed low. He's listed low because he's listed low because he's just not good enough. But he can be helpful and he can remove his shield, especially in tower. He can help you in tower. Uh, he can remove the boss's shield. So that is very effective in itself. So he does have uses. That's why he's in A. He does have a use. Um, but it's very select. It's very select. <laughs> his aura doesn't do enough. Doesn't do enough. He's a bleed hero, but he's not strong enough. He just doesn't satisfy me and you know especially when we compare to Elena who is up here it's no comparison I'd rather use Holder over, over Zaro he's much easier to build we can exclusive him so steer clear of him for now he needs a repatch moving up to A plus tier A plus A plus tier <laughs> um, okay Lester now I love Lester I've used Lester he's carried me really hard for the beginning of the game um, he has a self buff crit rate of 100%. He then uses an AoE nuke, which is fantastic. It does do a lot of damage. It will carry you through a long way. Um, but he will drop off later on. He just doesn't do enough. But that self buff of crit rate earns him a spot on A plus because it enables us to do a lot more. Now, Hardak, who is next to him, he is a very nice hero and he will help you a lot throughout the game throughout the game because he does deal defense damage he's very tanky um he will do an aoe attack to all enemies so he can do quite a lot and he will help you out massively so do again like all the epic heroes here that are listed on this tier they are all useful pve beginning game and later in the game you know very selective mark tower um faction towers so do keep hold of them do use them they are good now, a Boro is a very solid uh, single target nuker, especially early on, mid game, uh, towards the end of the game. He is still useful. You, you probably still can use him, but if you have the up above selected, then you know we can we can move away from a Boro. Um, he will do a like a three stage attack against an enemy. Now, if an enemy has feebleness, he will deal the same damage against them. That's a debuff he does. If you have any other heroes that do feebleness as a debuff then we can go ahead and use a Boro to use with them as a synergy. Um, so he is rated A+. He is very useful. He's a great damage dealer. And if you like the look of him as well, he's a ninja with dual swords, then please do use him. He is very fun. After that, we need no explanation. It's Holder. Um, Holder is a self-buffing, counter-attacking, leeching god. Um, he can deal a lot of bleed damage. He will progress you through a lot of the game. A lot of you are aware of that already. Um, he can be very, very efficient. But later on, again, Holder will drop off to some extent. He is still usable. Yes, he is still usable. But there are just better options that we can use to progress and to farm, to farm with. So Magus is a very strong epic healer. He will restore health of your teammates by his attack and also 8% of the max health of all allies. Um, he does go further and exclusive to, to cleanse attribute debuffs um, that, that your team holds. Remember that isn't like control statuses, it's just attributes who won't cleanse any uh, damage over time like Liz does. Um, he is helpful, he is usable. He's just not as good as one other epic healer, which we'll get to in a moment. Now, Mori, he's not listed above the, the other epics because he's better. Everyone in this tier are all around the same, okay? They're all A-plus tier. So please don't get confused and thinking, well, he's got Mori over across over Holder. That's not made like that. So Mori is a very good... Um, he does it deals an AoE damage to begin with, reducing people's turn meters by 20%. 
Uh, the fewer targets that are, the harder skill damage does. Okay, so if we were against a full team, his AoE isn't, for instance, as strong as the Leicester, but he is very useful. And uh, at exclusive, he can he'll reduce an extra 10% of the turn meter, so he'll be an effective 30%. Uh, he can have a chance to leech. There's a 40% chance of doing direct damage to do it. Direct damage to deal 50% leech. He also causes speed down on one of his uh, solo attacks. And he can self buff himself with attack up one, which is 20%. So Mori as well is a good starting hero, mid game hero. End game, I would not use Mori. Moving on to Natalie. Uh, Natalie just doesn't do enough. She is another bleed hero. But for me personally, she doesn't do enough in the game yet. But don't forget, this could change. She could get repatched. She is, however, more favorable over Hizaro. Um, so if you're forced to use her, use her. I would rather use Holder over, over um, Natalie. But she, yeah, she's a legend. So please keep hold of them. They're due to be patched at any point. Zyra, moving on to Zyra, she is a um, she's a control hero again, but she does deal some damage, and that's why she's listed, listed higher than a Sindo. Um, she can have a she does various debuff effects, freeze, horrify. It's, it's all of the control effects in one that she has a chance of dropping. Um, so she is helpful early game, mid game, but she will not be doing anywhere near enough in dungeons, towers, uh, guild boss, that kind of thing, late game. So you can use her, just be aware that you will be having to change her. Now, Maeve. I see a lot of people raving about Maeve. Uh, she's more used PvP, to be honest, guys. Um, she doesn't deal enough single target damage to be up in the rankings. She does deal some like uh, CC, such as Hypnotized and, and Slumber Mark. But it's not enough. She does deal defense down too, which is nice. It's nice. But she's just not doing enough for me. She's not doing enough for me at the moment. Um, she does deal nice damage, don't get me wrong. So if you have her and she is your option, then you know you can use her. But be prepared that you may need to change her out or regress her at a later stage. Moving on to Greta. Now Greta is very much a PvP hero. She can, however, deal some very nice selective single target nukes and she can strip buffs. Goretta is, she's just a select hero. She can freeze as well, but she doesn't do enough in PvE to put her up the rankings any higher than this. Um, you know, I, I wish I could, but you just can't. She, she's average, okay? She's on par with the rest of these on this tier. So... If you do have her as a single target nuka, you can use her. Just be aware that are better in the game. Moving on to Gunner. Now, Gunner is quite a new hero to me, and I don't know a huge amount about him. I do have him on my alternate account, however. And I've got to say, I do like his skill set. His burn deals um, damage off of defense. Uh, he does deal one stage of health burn. So that's why he's an A+, because he does do a little bit of health burn. Um, but the rest of his kit doesn't seem quite as effective as I first thought. I was really happy to see Gunner to begin with. He just doesn't, he's not doing enough. He is, however, obviously causing burn and health burn, but then if we're comparing him to other damage over times in the game that deal burn and health burn, he is nowhere near on par with those. Now, moving on to Mai. Mai looks absolutely incredible um, for art. Fantastic. She does deal 200% attack damage and she does reduce the enemy's attack. Now that all in itself is very handy. It's very handy, especially if we, we know we're not too strong on healers and not taking as much damage. She is very useful and she will help carry you through the game. But late game she drops off because her damage just isn't enough and we're not needing that attack down as much. And it, you know, when we're, when we're comparing, she does obviously enemies with debuffs. They do take a periodic uh, damage at the end of each wave. But compared to what we can get from other heroes, say, that are dealing bleed and burns and health burns, it's no comparison. It's no comparison. It is helpful, but it's no comparison. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. 
Now, Besmog, I know a lot of people in my other tier list, tier list are like, why are you not rating Besmog higher? And I have gone through Besmog. I have had a read of Besmog. I have had a little play with Besmog. His skills read very nice. But when we compare him to what else we have to offer, he does drop off. He is helpful. He will help you carry early game, mid game. Um, but once we're getting towards farming towers and dungeons, he's just nowhere to be seen. Um... I'm not slating Besmok. I'm not slating Besmok. He has some really cool features. He's a cool looking hero. He does some nice damage. But, you know, we're, we're looking at the best of the best. The best of the best. And he's just not there. He's just not quite there. So I'm sorry if I've offended anyone. And again, please feel free to comment below and say, Kazakh, no. <laughs> no, I love Besmok. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just cannot rate him any higher. I just can't. I'm sorry. Moving on to Eric. Um, Eric gets bombs at the beginning of each wave. Um, and he can deal some nice damage. He throws these bombs. They detonate. Um, he can deal some burn. He can deal some stuns. But he doesn't do enough damage. He's 140% base rate of attack damage to all enemies. Which is nothing in comparison to what some of our heroes have. He doesn't have enough burn to to stack up on any bosses, to stack up on, you know, on what we need it to. So for that reason alone, it makes him much less than what he could be. He is, however, a fun hero and he is fun to play around with. And he will be used in some some places like faction towers and things like that. Just as all these other heroes in A+, they will all be used in faction towers. So please do not be disheartened by what I'm saying. Eric also does have a chance of reducing defense down to, to defense down to, I may add, which is 60% of defense gone from the enemy, which could then enable others to deal some pretty nasty ass damage. So he is a cool hero and he's a dwarf. He's got great big rockets on his back. He throws bombs. How fun does that sound? So he is a fun hero, but compared to some of the others, and I keep saying this. We are going to get to the good ones. We are going to get to the good ones. Keep hold of him. He could change in the future. Now, moving on to Sana. Now, she does have a really nice um, skill set. She does. And she can deal some nice damage. She knows she was 80% attack damage to all enemies. And self gains a 30% crit damage bonus. It's pretty large. Exclusive free. She increases 50% crit rate for all allies. But that's an exclusive free. And that means that people are going to be waiting a long time before they can start to use Sana. Um, she is a cool hero. She, you know, her, her turn meter cannot be reduced. Um, she gains one layer of sharp arrow, which, she, you know, when she lands as a crit, increases 1% speed and 1% direct damage. She does have a pretty cool set. Um, she is useful. She will help you early, mid game. Late game, though, she's not going to be used anyway. She's not going to help us clear dungeons. Um, she will be very good in, in, in Mark Tower, in Faction Tower. So, again, I'm sorry if some of you that love Sana feel a bit iffy about that she is good she is a plus she is average as <laughs> all of these i'm going to keep saying that um so yes moving on to anna again she is a cool hero she will do a lot of aoe damage um she can you know she 200 percent attack detonation damage as well she also can do some burns um she gains 40 percent speed for two times when she detonates burn or deals detonation damage so she does have some nice features but her damage just isn't quite enough compared to what else we have to offer currently in the game and that's why she is at a plus tier um but yeah if you have a do use her especially early game mid game she's going to carry you through um my head my head Moving on to Jennifer. Jennifer again has a really nice skill set. And after four turns, she gains Bum Hug, which I thought was Humbug, which is a sweet. So, <laughs> but Bum Hug. And this, is it Bum Hug? I think it is. I'm going to leave it as Bum Hug. I'm sorry. I'm going to leave it as Bum Hug. Um, I am. I'm leaving it as Bum Hug. Uh, yeah, I am. But after four turns, she will basically repeat her AoE attack, which is super nice. It's 300% attack damage. Repeating that is great, but we're not going to be hanging around four waves for her to detonate that. I'm sorry, we're not. Um, it, it, PvP, she can use as stool teams. Great. She does do some nice damage. She will help carry you through, just as well as everyone else here, um, like my... 
uh, and the other AoE attackers here. She's very much on par with them. That's why she's in A+. She does have a really cool set. Moving on to Vera. Now, Vera is a very cool support. She can self-stealth all the team for, I think it's two turns, it may be one. Um, she also increases everyone's crit rate by 50%, which in itself is amazing because it's just an AoE group buff. Her heals aren't quite strong enough for my liking, um, and she doesn't really offer much else than that 50% crit rate and that stuff. She does have a silence, which is 20% chance to inflict it. But again, we're talking about control and the chance is low. So for that reason, Vera is A plus for me. Now, Sinton. Sinton is a cool hero and he does AoE taunt provoke. He can help you to get, get progress through the game. He's more PvP based, however, um, so that we can stall teams. PvE, we're going to be clearing waves fast enough that we don't really need him to provoke a lot. But like I said, early game and mid game, he will help tank your tank for your team so that you can progress through with some damage dealers not getting affected or not getting hit. Margarita, and I love Margarita, I do, I do. But for the same reason as Jennifer and the same reason as May, she just doesn't do enough damage and it's mainly AoE, basically for fast clearing out enemies. Other than that, she's not doing a lot. Single target, dungeons, bosses, um, towers, She's just not helping us kill or nuke down a boss compared to what we can get above damage over time with other single target attackers. Let's talk about Ariel, final in our A+, before we get to the S tier. Ariel is a fun hero. She can single target nuke for a lot of damage, 600% at a base, which increases by 60% for each skill. However, this is every four turns or three turns when it's upgraded. And remember, it is single target damage. The trouble is, other than this, she doesn't offer a huge amount. She does self-stealth, which is cool, and she will do more damage after coming out of that stealth. She will also hit the lower health enemies much harder, especially if she's in concealment, or stealth, should we say. So you could pair her with Vera, for instance, and that will help her a lot. A single target doesn't do enough for me. It's pure single target damage. Um, I think it ends up to be about 380% attack damage by the end of it, fully upgraded. She is useful. There are some people I talk to who use Ariel, and you're fully within your right to use Ariel, but there are better options. There are better options, okay? She is cool. She is good. We've done enough testing. To continue to use her, that's, you know, that's... <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm upset you. I'm sorry, okay? I hope you agree. I hope you agree after you've gone through some of the above. So moving on to the S tier where people are thinking juicy heroes. These are the good ones. These are the good ones. They're not S plus. They're not godlike, but they're S tier. Um, and they beat all of these below. Moving on to Alahan. I really like Alahan. That's why I've got him in S tier. I do like him. You remove all the enemy shields. Um, he deals 100% attack damage. He has a 40% chance of inflicting stun for one turn. So he, you know, although he's a healer and he's a buffer, um, he is very good for a little bit of CC. I know we don't want control here, but he's rating higher into S because he has some control as well, which can really save you between waves. His passive skill, he restores 10% of health to an ally, increases their attack by 40%. It is only to one ally. It is only to 40%. Um, whenever this ally destroys an enemy's target shield and when he's alive, I did have to read that skill because it's quite a bit of text. So I do apologize. I don't have a massive brain. I can't hold all of the info in my little brain. He does, however, have a very cool uh, second skill, which is he will match everyone's health to the highest percent health hero on your team. So if you have someone at 90% and everyone else is at 10%, he's gonna make everyone at 90%, which is a great health saving feature. Uh, we don't need a big healer for that. He's just really cool. And I do like Alahan. Moving on to Guhana, and she is a great support. She's a great healer. She'll restore health by 10% of all allies and increase her turn meter by 20%. She sounds like someone else, or very similar. She is a bit similar to space, but she has some different features. She also increases all allies' attack by 20% for two turns, which is a decent amount of attack increase. The rest restoration effect is increased by 40% if a target's health is no more than 50%. So if they're lower in health, she's going to deal a bit more, you know, a bit more healing. At exclusive one, she also cleanses five damage over time debuffs, similar to Liz that gets a box standard. She also reduces all the direct damage as a passive when she's alive on the field. Um, so that, again, is a nice feature to have for your team taking less direct damage. She can deal speed down and she will give your team speed up. 
and she can also inflict inferior severe wound, which basically stops the healing effect of the enemy. So they could be, um, say, they're, they're trying to heal, heal themselves, and uh, they're just not able to heal to the effect that they want to. So 60% debuff means they're dealing 40% healing of what they should be doing. So let's talk about Maya quickly. She has quite an interesting ultimate. If people have lost health, then she will have a 35% reduction of her own health. And she will restore the allies of all HP uh, three times for 8% maximum health. Now, if someone is full health on the first turn, she will grant them consolidation, which reduces the damage taken. If uh, on the second chance, if people are the second restoration, if people are still full health, she'll grant them a 15% shield. And by the third time, if everyone's full, she's going to give them a resistance debuff buff <laughs> by 25%. So she has some really cool features there in itself. Um, every time someone takes direct damage, she self heals to, to rejuvenate herself. Um, on another skill, she restores health by 15% of the maximum health P of an ally and another two allies. So it's not a full team heal, but it's pretty nice. She also cleanses three layers of damage over time, debuffs from them, and grants them a, a, a heal over time for two turns. Her basic as well, she can deal damage and she restore 5% of the uh, the max health of the, the ally, the lowest health. So she's a great, great epic healer. Uh, that's why she's above Magus. Um, and that's why she's above the likes of Vera and stuff, because she just has such a wide kit to keep your team alive. Now, Liz, on the other hand, is also a great, great epic healer as well. She uh, Her ultimate, she will restore health by 10% of max health for all allies. She cleanses five layers of damage over time. So if we're stacked in poisons, in, in burns, in health burns, she's going to be great for getting rid of those who are not taking any damage. She's also going to grant them a shield 20% of her health. She's fantastic, okay? She is fantastic. Her passive, she restores her self health by 3% for every one debuff inflicted on an enemy. That's the likes of her health burn that she deals. So not only is she healing your team, keeping them alive, um, she's also dealing damage in the form of health burn. So she can be very good for bosses. She can be very good for um, a guild boss even. Uh, dungeons, towers, everything. She is pretty much used everywhere in the game. I was tempted to put her at S+, plus, but I just can't. I just can't, even though she does have such a wide variety. She's sitting so borderline. But it comes down to, to who we can use in other positions at the same time. So it's hard. It's very hard. And it's very hard making these tier lists. Because people are never happy. Or some people are very happy. It's either or. Now, Garena. It was this one in the cloak. She is a really cool hero. Um, she grants all allies immortal for a turn on her ultimate. Uh, she heals for two turns. And meanwhile, meanwhile, anyone that dies, she will reduce her own health by 20% to resurrect them. So she is just fantastic in that sense, especially PvE. Um, you know, bringing everyone back to life is an insane feature and granting immortal at the same time. So... Garena is definitely an S tier. Her passive, she restores self health by 8% of max health when a target dies. So if we're killing people, she's healing. Um, she can also do a little bit of damage. And she increases the duration of all the attribute debuffs that we have on the enemies too. So in that sense, we're refreshing any um, attribute debuff, not damage over time. Okay, not damage over time. So it's attributes and controls. She does not extend control debuffs just to attribute, so attack down, defense down, that kind of thing. Now her single attack can cause defense down to two other enemies as well, which is fantastic because, you know, she has that just on her basic skill. So she's definitely an S tier hero for me. Now, Melina, Melina, I got cursed with free Melina. Free Melina, not Melia, Melina. I wouldn't be cursed with free Melia, that'd be fantastic. Free Melina. Now, she is a very cool hero, and I've been debating putting her into S+. She would be S+, but she just needs exclusives to be in that regard. So that's why she's staying at S. Um, she does remove all the attribute buffs from enemies. She'll do an AoE attack at the same time. Uh, the fewer enemy targets there are, the more damage a skill deals. And bear in mind, she will heal all our allies for 20% of the amount doubt so she's a great support just in that factor but not only that she also gets chivalry and she can increase her direct damage and it stacks up to 20 layers the next skill she has increases all allies effect, effect resistance by 25 percent which is big in itself it restores their health by eight percent of their max health and an exclusive one she will give everyone a 20 percent shield to me that's just such a great skill 
and you know it's a great skill it's the same as that ultimate exclusive free the damage that she deals 35 percent of that damage dealt returns in health to everyone to everyone um you know she's just a very cool support hero um so yeah s tier for me all day long i'm using her a lot on a lot of the content she will help you through a lot of content she's not a big damage dealer though so don't get confused uh, by her aoe the amount she, she does deal is a lot in health though off as well is a very very good hero that's why he's in s tier um he will deal two stages of 100 percent attack damage to all enemies with a 50 percent chance of inflicting health burn for two turns that's pretty huge exclusive too he can inflict feebleness as well on all enemies so again he's a good debuffer he's given that health burn which is huge we all know how good health burn is uh he does have a passive where he will put a, a random hunting target on an enemy now if that enemy dies he will gain at 18 percent of max health back and he will launch another attack it's a very nice passive exclusive one um if the enemy if the enemy dies under hunting he will increase all allies attack by 40 percent he also deals to a single enemy uh, defense down two and 100% attack damage. This is nice and tenacity down two. So this is also, that would be 60%. Let me check. Yeah, it decreases tenacity by 60%, which means they're taking more crit damage. So that as well is also pretty huge. His base attack is uh, causing effect resistance down two. So it means that the enemy is also more um, open to having effects landed on him, say... Uh, defense down um damage over times um cc anything so that's also very nice for a single target say a boss now taff is quite a <laughs> taff is a great hero he has a brilliant set he did change it a little bit um he deals 100 percent attack damage to all enemies and inflicts intertwined and one layer of poison on them for two turns now when intertwined runs out or it, it disappears from the enemy it will stun them for one turn which is huge in itself it will store a lot of enemy teams it will help carry you through a lot of the game to begin with um you know having that extra turn there where we're not taking any damage or just make rendering the enemy um useless he has a passive where he inflicts a layer of poison on all enemies at the beginning of each wave for two turns and he deals 30 percent more poison damage he also grants all allies a heal for two turns um, and cleanses three layers of damage over time. He can also deal poison and deep poisoning on his single attack. So Taff is definitely an S tier hero. I do really like Taff. Valentine, who we're moving on to next. He is a great hero. He can chain lightning. He can do a lot of damage. Um, he can reduce turn meters on the enemies. He is definitely an S tier. I can't put him any higher than that because he just doesn't deal enough damage. He will carry you through early game, mid game, some of the late game. In, in campaign story but when we're moving on to bosses he just isn't doing enough for us to continue using him but he is a great great hero now yoko yoko can deal some nasty damage she can also uh, go from one enemy to the next when she kills someone in ultimate if she's an exclusive one she is very good she is an s tier she can do some nasty single target damage but when we compare her to the likes of zia she is not cutting it um, so if you don't have Zia, then it's Yoko. If you do have Zia, then it's by Yoko. That kind of thing. Um, she's very good. Definitely use her if you have her and you don't have Zia. Oh, Serena, she is a great hero. She'll do a lot of AoE damage. She'll self buff feathers, which then makes a skill switch, and she'll do even more damage. Um, she can self-shield. She can self-stealth. So she is very cool, but she doesn't do enough damage to push her on further she is however ranked higher than the likes of margarita which is very you know that that's unusual right and, and jennifer so she is a great hero if you have a definitely user she'll carry you through a lot of the game she will be used later on as well so definitely if you've got serena a great hero keep using her now turf turf is a poison dealing hero and he has such great self-sustain he will self counter attack he will self shield um and he will also on his ultimate he will deal a nice amount of damage to and also inflict deep poisoning along with poison at the same time he is like i said self-sustained he will help carry you through a lot of the content as well so if you do have turf then do use him uh, people have rated him lower he is very good however so you know continue to use him i have mine maxed out um all in all he's a good good hero 
Slack though is an absolute animal. He is rated S tier. He can remove all buffs from the enemies and if he's high enough exclusive he will steal those buffs. He will deal enough damage and he will deal enough damage across the board um, to help carry you through a lot of the campaign and he is definitely used later on in the game too, end game. So continue to use Slack though, he's a great hero. You're probably never going to regress him. He not only is he used in PvE a lot, he's also used in PvP so he's so versatile. Now Mewtwo. Mewtwo can deal a lot of single target damage, especially when he's werewolf form. Um, I don't need to say a lot about him because he is very good guys. He deals so much damage. So definitely, if you've got Mewtwo, great. Continue using him. Now Lamb. A lot of people don't know anything about Lamb. Okay, they, they think, well, is he any good? He's got a weird set. It reads a lot. Um, I'm going to tell you now, Lamb is very good and he definitely deserves an S tier, okay? He is a, uh, who, who would use against a boss? Dungeons. Um, he, you know, even guild boss as well, he will do a lot of damage. Basically, you stack him in max health. Um, any enemy that has black flame on them means that they have a 25% effect debuff, okay? So, uh, all our effects are landing easier. Um, he will do a lot of damage. Have faith in Lamb. Trust me, he is S tier, but he's very late game. He's not going to carry you through the likes of early game. Um, although maybe he could because you just stack him in health. You just stack him in health. It may be a bit of a longer fight, but, you know, generally he, he he's going to help you out, especially when he's got exclusive on him. He becomes super, super powerful, especially against bosses. Um, his Black Flame stacking and really Lamb is very good. So use him against bosses. You know, a lot of other content he's not used in. He is pretty much a boss killer. Uh, Walter we have final in our S tier list and Walter is a very good poison dealing hero as well. He will deal some nice damage and he will deal a lot of poisons throughout the board. Um, I don't really have a lot to say about Walter other than he's he is definitely an S tier and he can deal some nice damage. He'll help carry you through early game and mid game and he's still useful late game. He's even useful in dungeons. He's useful in tower. He's useful across the board. He's a good all rounder. Moving on to S plus tier, which is where the great heroes start to come in. Okay, Wim is obviously up there because of the size of his shield. He grants to your team the sustainability. Um, he is just a fantastic epic. And one of those, you know, you're going to need late game especially. You know, he'll carry you from early game, mid game, late game. So definitely use Wim. Um, there are some points, you know, I was con contemplating Wim and and Melina comparing the both um so it was hard for me to decide if he should if she if he goes to s plus should she go to s plus but no because Wim is an epic he's much more obtainable and he just across the board will help you so much throughout the game now Focas is definitely 100% an s plus hero um he will enable you to help any other mega dealer you have throughout the entire game um, by resetting our, our our allies turn meter and resetting their skills that have previously used so ideally you want someone to go before him and then you reset him with focus he will help carry you through the game if you pull a focus and a lester or a focus and a uh, and a Zia, a Focus, and any damage dealer, it's going to be huge, okay? He will he will reset the highest attacking hero on your team. Focus is incredible. He also get, grants you Immortal for one turn. You know, his basic can reduce the turn meter of someone for, I think it's 15%. But Focus is definitely S+, plus and he deserves that to stay there, just for that ultimate ability of his resetting and increasing the turn meter fully. It's, it's huge. It's absolutely huge. Luz is fantastic. Luz is an amazing damage dealer. He will do it in AoE. It may seem low, as it reads, but he also leeches by 50%. He's so self-sustaining. He can do so much damage. You have to try Luz if you haven't tried him. I don't see people raving about Luz enough. He is a fantastic hero. Okay, he's just brilliant. He's brilliant. He has, you know, he can he can be used in so many places. So please, if you have Luz, do use him. Don't throw him away. Now Nidroll is a fantastic legend. His ultimate will do a decent amount of attack damage to random five enemies, which increases to eight at exclusive three, which is freaking crazy. Um, his forty percent chance to inflict a layer of bleed. Uh, it has a very small cooldown, really, when we think of the, you know, the substantiability of it. Um, it reduced down to four turns. 
after it's fully upgraded. His passive increases the bleed damage dealt by Nidroll by 15%. Uh, meanwhile, there is a 60% chance to convert direct damage to bleed damage whenever a target takes direct damage while under bleed status. So it grants a, a, like an extra boost to the damage um, that's initially converted. So he will deal 185% attack damage to all enemies. The damage of this attack increases by 10% for every layer of bleed the target has up to 50%. So that, that's not an AoE. Um, that's not an ultimate. That is just one of his second skills. So that again is another great skill to have. It also increases up to 100% damage if you have his meta exclusive one. So he can deal some nasty damage. Again, his basic attack will deal more bleed. Um, so Nidroll definitely deserves to be S+. Especially later in the game, he can help us with a lot. He can help us with a lot. He'll help you early game, mid game, but late game as well. He really excels. Okay, let's talk about Alina. Let's talk about Alina. She will deal a AoE, 60% um, attack damage, 40% chance to inflict bleed across all enemies with 20% return of leech. Now her passive is huge. Her passive is huge. She deals 25% attack damage to all enemies with three or more layers of bleed and resets the duration of these bleeds. So if it's just about to run out, she's going to refresh it all and then maybe stack more on top with her attack. This is at the end of each turn it happens and she grants herself one layer of spirit blade. She casts Severing Light and loses all layers of Spirit, spirit Blade after reaching it. 12 layers of Spirit Blade. Which again is her ultimate repeating. So she's granting even more bleeds. It's just freaking crazy. It's, it's, it's insane. Um, her other skill is Countering Edge. She self-counters. Not only does she self-counter, she affect hit up too. She affect hit up. Two, which is a 50% increase in her effect hit. We're going to be landing bleeds everywhere. Everywhere. It's just heaven. It's absolute heaven. She is a holder on steroids. If you have Alina, you have to use her. Please, for goodness sake, use Alina. She just destroys Holder. She destroys Holder. He is no comparison to Alina. I'm sorry. He's not. I'm sorry. He's just not. If I'm wrong, tell me, but... Jeez, she just has the kit. She has the kit. Now, Zia is used across the game. She is a huge, huge damage dealer. Uh, if you have Zia, congratulations. You completed the game. No, <laughs> you haven't. She's very, very good. Um, she will self-buff, increasing her crit rate by 40% and her crit damage by 60% for one turn. That effect cannot be removed. It also causes, you know, it's just you. If you have... 50% or 60% crit rate, that's 100% guaranteed crit damage. Um, you know, so her ultimate is going to really, really hit hard. That will be a 720% attack damage to a single enemy. Her passive, each time Zia takes an action, she has a 60% chance to pursue and attack the target with the lowest health once, dealing 200% attack damage. So that is also a huge passive. She deals 220% attack damage to a single enemy and reduces the cooldown of her concentration increase, which is a self buff of the crit rate and crit damage. I will say, if you have her exclusive free, she becomes an absolute beast. She becomes an absolute beast. So really to get the most out of Zia, you're going to want to have her exclusive free. She is still effective without that though. So don't be afraid to use it. Yes, I know it's frustrating to see her self-buffing. Um, she does do a bit of damage when she self-buffs. She just slaps after that. So Zia, to me, definitely has plus across the game. Fiona is a great, great legend. She will deal a decent amount of damage to begin with. She will then have a 40% chance to stun everyone, which is increased with exclusivity. Her passive is she's immune to control effects, which is massive. Uh, she restores all allies' health by 10% of Fiona's max health when her grace reaches eight layers. She has um, a, a fantastic second skill where she, she cleanses an ally's debuffs and grants some resistance buff. For two turns. Meanwhile, increases the target's attack by 40% as well. And that's for two turns. If the target is killed, she revives the target at 20% of her max health and grants them stealth. So it gives them a chance to recover. 
she also deals in very severe wound to a single target. Now that in itself is pretty big, especially against bosses, and that's why she can be used in a, in quite a few team synergies. She's very good advancing the campaign. Um, she restores the health for four percent to an ally with the lowest health, which isn't mad. It's not. It's not massive, but it's something. Okay, and that inferior severe wound on base attack is very good. So Fiona definitely is entitled to her S plus ranking. But no, Dario is a huge hero. He deals 300% attack damage to the enemy of the lowest health. If that skill successfully kills, he will gain two layers of Shadow Flame. Now, when he has Shadow Flame, he will completely ignore the enemy's defense. It's just insane. So, although he cannot crit, he cannot crit. It just completely ignore defense. You don't need to build him with any crit rate or crit damage. Go full attack. Um, it's huge. It's the best when he's at exclusive one. But he is just such a single target nuke. His passive is he gains one layer of Shadow Flame at the beginning of each wave. Every time a unit dies, he gains another layer of it. Uh, when gaining six layers, he releases Disrupting Ray. So he re basically single target nukes again at six layers. It's massive. Um, his second attack, he does 500% attack to a single enemy and gains another two layers of Shadow Flame. And his basic is he will just deal 280% attack damage straight up and he gains another layer of Shadow Flame. Dario is absolutely insane. If you're not using him, you're sleeping on him. Please use Dario. He is so freaking good. Now, all of you should have space by now for free. Okay, for free. And she is an incredible hero. She will help you through so much in the game. You will use her everywhere. You will, you will learn to love space. Okay, she restores all allies' health by 10% of their maximum health. Grants them a layer of heal for two turns as well, which is heal over time. She increases her turn meters by 20%. Not only that, she has a passive increases her self turn meter by 18% at the beginning of each wave. She also deals 200% attack damage to a single enemy with a 60% chance to reduce their speed by 40% for two turns. Meanwhile, she increases all allies' speed by 20% for two turns. She's just crazy. She's crazy good. Um, her base will also have the chance of reducing an enemy's turn meter. So again, she's just so good and you will use her in so much of the game. She's definitely S plus tier. Right, now we're moving on to god tier and there is a few heroes up here and i'm going to explain why these heroes are god tier because they are so godly um first up is Ockmin. that is the dude with the horns the demon guy from demon legion um Ockmin is a huge huge hero he will attack a random enemy five times dealing 100 percent attack but not only that a 40 percent chance to inflict a layer of burn or health burn for two turns. Now health burn is huge. Burn is also very good, but health burn is so much better. His passive, every time the enemy takes burn or health burn damage, he restores 30% of attack in health. Okay, so he's restoring, he's self-healing. If burn is detonated, the restoration rate doubles. So that in itself is very good, but that's not the best part. The best part for Orkmin is he will deal 100% attack damage to all enemies. 60% chance to inflict a layer of burn or health burn for two turns while while refreshing the duration of all damage over time debuffs. Massive. Absolutely massive so that we can stack as much debuffs as we can to, in a, to a boss. You know, they're not going to be running out. That is so huge. That can happen every three turns if he's skilled up. It's, it's just crazy to think that all the debuffs, all the damage over time debuffs, are getting refreshed and then more stacking on top and that's to all enemies not just to one that's to all enemies all enemies so if you even if you're using them with holder you know you're refreshing bleeds across the board as well so you can stack more along the way so Aquin is absolutely massive absolutely huge okay congratulations if you have Aquin. he is fantastic okay now sigmund is a god tier hero he got reworked he is now incredible i wish i had him if you have him i'm friggin jealous um he inflicts 200 percent defense damage to all enemies with a 60 percent chance to inflict health burning for two turns his passive if he takes damage um there's a, there's a chance he can counter attack and his counter attack is basic he's going to deal more health burn the the target has to be under health burn in order for that to happen to have the chance of counter attacking but it's just a huge passive to have to be able to just counter attack and inflict more health burn his second skill he, he deals 200 percent damage to an enemy he inflicts another layer of health burn and he grants all allies a 20 percent shield which is massive as well in itself 
Um, he deals an extra f damage by 3% of max health if a target is under health burning status when this skill deals damage. So that as well is, is just crazy. Sigmund is definitely a god tier hero. If you have him, you'll understand why. Congratulations if you've just pulled him. Now on to Elec, who I'm so sorry to the person if you're watching this who used Elec as food because some tier list rated him as a C tier. I don't know how low that was, but it sounds pretty low to me. He is god tier. Um, so I'm very sorry anyone else who's read that tier list that is also feeding <laughs> Elec. Oh my god, he's just got the kit. He's got the absolute kit. He grants all allies consolidation, which reduces 40% of damage taken. At exclusive free, he will grant all allies 30% shield. It, it, he's got the kit. His passive every reduces the amount uh, of crit damage he takes, transfers debuffs received by the ally to himself. It can be triggered three times until the start of Elix next turn. So he's just stacking everything onto himself. He's like, yeah, I got you, bro. I got you. I'll have that. I got you. His second skill, he increases allies' defense by 60% and increases tenacity by 30% for two turns. That means everyone's taking so much less damage. Not only is it 60% defense buff, it's also a 30% less crit damage bonus. Also, his exclusive one, he grants all allies' resistance debuff, which is a 25% less chance of getting hit by effects. He's just an absolute beast. He also has a chance to inflict stun on a single target and it increases by the amount of buffs that the enemy has. He is just an absolute monster and if you have Elec, he will carry you from early game, mid game, end game, bosses, everything. He's just friggin' incredible. I love Elec. So if you have him, congratulations again. It is just absolutely massive support for your entire team. You have to use him. Now, if you have Malia, I'm sure you're already aware that she is a god tier hero. She is so good. Everyone knows it. Um, it's old news now. So it's old news. Why are you still going on about Malia? Because she's so good. Even in base form, she's just inflicting so much health burn. Once you transform into Valkyrie, she, she self heals. She inflicts health burn everywhere. She is incredible. Okay. She's very, very good. Um, she's immune to control effects when she's Valkyrie. She deals a good amount of attack damage too. So if you have Melia, continue using Melia. She's very good. Like I can't say anything else on her. She's just, she's just fantastic. She's just fantastic. Now next up is a very special hero. It is Hisonia. And yes, Hisonia is a boy. It's not a girl. I used to think it was a girl until I got corrected. So it's a bit of a trap. It's definitely a boy. Okay, it's definitely a boy. Now Hisonia, I'm gonna cut straight to the chase on one. Why his Onya is so massive. He has a passive, right? Everyone else is capped to 8% of health burn. His Onya is not, okay? He has a passive which he deals 16% more health burning damage, which increases even more than that, up to 24% health burn. That's absolutely huge, okay? That's huge. His ultimate, he will deal 200% um, attack damage to all enemies with a 60% chance to inflict layer on everyone for one turn. Um, also, an exclusive one, he will additionally trigger another health burn on everyone. Um, his second attack is he, he attacks a single enemy. Meanwhile, deals extra damage by 3% of the max health to the target for every layer of health peak of, of health burning on him. All enemies have the damage of each layer caps at 8% of his max health. So that one isn't quite similar to it doesn't it doesn't benefit from the passive like at the end of a tick that is purely 8% um, on that one. His basic is he will deal attack damage to an enemy and two random enemies with a 40% chance to inflict further health burning. His Zonya is your go-to hero for health burning. If you have him and you have Ochmin, I can't say, it. you know, if you have his Zonya and Ochmin, refreshing his health burns and dealing, it's just insane. Okay, if you have his Zonya, he is the legendary boss killer. He will carry you through content too. He's just so good. I love his Onya, especially for his passive increasing health burn damage is just incredible. Now, last but not least, we have the queen herself, the goddess, Catherine, who you can get for completing the campaign. She is incredible. Absolutely incredible. She will grant all allies counterattacks. She will shield everyone for 40% health for two turns. 
that in itself is huge at exclusive two it becomes a 60 percent shield completely completely replacing a whim for instance uh passive she restores all allies health by 4.8 percent of Catherine's max health at the beginning of each turn not at the end at the beginning um she grants consolidation on all allies for two turns which reduces 40 percent of the damage taken similar to elec um and she will deal two stages of 100 percent attack damage to each enemy sorry to a single enemy I'm, I, I'm getting this video is going on long Okay, I'm trying my best, guys. I'm trying my best. The second stage of which is a 60% chance to inflict feebleness two for two turns, which basically increases that target's damage received by 40%. I don't need to say anything else. And she speaks for herself while she's god tier. Like, this was long, okay, guys. I've tried my best. So I've tried my best for the community. I've tried my best for all of you. And I hope that some of you do agree with this tier list. Remember, all tier lists are opinionated. They are based on my opinion and others within my community who have helped build this tier list. Do remember that a lot of these are beta players. They do know their stuff. I did try and consult with them during this. So a huge shout out to you who did help with this. I really appreciate any information that you've given and it helped me make this tier list to help others. So that's what the goal is. That's what it's all about. It's all about helping everyone else who's playing the game. I hope you're all having a great time. I hope you have some of these god tier uh legends s plus s a plus and a they're all very very good they all have a use okay never ever ever watch a tier list and feed a legend because at future date it can get changed i'm carl zacknable this was a very tough tier list to do make sure you like make sure you subscribe and make sure you comment thank you everyone for watching i will see you all very soon